for some reason, this problem has been asked by a lot of tech companies. And you might wonder, what is so special about it? It feels so simple. Well, the only catch over here is that you want to find a solution that works in a constant space. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, we will go over the problem statement and understand the given test cases. After that, we will start off with the most obvious way and then we are going to find a solution that works in constant space. We won't be taking up any extra space. And then, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's quickly make sure that we understand the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an integer array and you have to return me the pivot index. A pivot index is not a very generic term. It can change based upon the problem that you are solving. For this particular problem, you define a pivot index in such a way that the sum of elements on the left is equal to the sum of elements on the right. So based upon this, let us look at the first test case that we have. In this particular example, when you take a zero based indexing, so you have zero, one, two, three, four, and five. For this particular test case, the pivot index is the third element. So what does that mean? It simply means that the sum of elements on the left, it is equal to the sum of elements on the right. And you can see that both of these sums are 11. So you can say that for this particular test case, three is your answer, right? Now there can also be some edge cases. And for those scenarios, this problem tells you a specific condition. For example, I have this particular test case. In this, you don't have any pivot index. There is no index where the sum of elements on the left equals sum of elements on the right. In such a scenario, you need to return minus one as your answer. It simply means that there is no index that satisfies your criteria. Also, the pivot index can lie anywhere in the array. For example, when I see this third test case, over here, I do a zero based indexing. So I have elements zero, one, and then a two. If you notice, when I look at this particular index, the sum of elements on the left, that is zero because I don't have any elements. And the sum of elements on the right, that is once again zero because one plus of minus one equals to zero. So in this particular test case, zero will be your answer. That means the element at index zero, this is your pivot. So these test cases kind of cover all of the different scenarios that are possible. If you feel that we have now understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Let's say you have this array in front of you. And when you have to think of the most naive way, what can you do? What you can do is you can start off with the very first index. That means I am at the zeroth index. And for each index, you can look all of the elements on the left and all of the elements on the right. And then you can do a sum. So for this particular index, I don't have any elements on the left. So my sum is zero. On the right, I have all of these elements and the sum is 27. This is not the same. So what you can do is you can move ahead to the next index. This time I am at index one. On the left, I only have one element. So my sum is one. And on the right, I have these four elements and the sum is 20. This is once again, not the same. So I can move ahead. When I'm at index two, the number of elements on the left, the sum is eight. And the number of elements on the right, the sum is 70. You move ahead once again. Once you reach this particular index, that is index three, the sum of elements on the left, that is equal to 11. And the sum of elements on the right, that is once again equal to 11. Now, both of these sums are equal. So you know that this is the pivot index and this is where you stop and you can return this three as your answer. This approach works perfectly and it will give you a correct answer every time. But do you see the problem with this approach? For every iteration, you are calculating all of the left sums and the right sums. So technically, this problem is changing into a time complexity of order of n squared. And this is not what we desire. 
also if you notice we are doing all of these calculations again and again right so definitely we need to find a better way in an efficient approach you should be able to avoid all of these calculations again and again correct let us take a look at our sample test case once again and there are two things that i know for sure i have to iterate over every element in the array and i have to find out the sum as well at every iteration i am finding out the left sum and the right sum so and every iteration there is a total sum involved correct maybe we can take advantage of it so what we are going to do is we are going to add up all of these elements available and then assign them to a variable called right sum the total sum will be 28 the idea over here is that you have to start at the very beginning right so the left sum is currently zero and in the right i have all of these elements so i just did one iteration of the array and found that sum so right now my left sum is zero and the right sum is 28 and i haven't even started so this is a very good beginning point what you can now do is you can start a for loop that will iterate over every element in the array currently i am at the very first index so when you are at this first index what just happens there are no elements in the left so the left sum is zero and on the right what just happened you have all of these elements except this particular value so basically i am taking up this value and to get the right sum i will subtract it from my existing right sum my right sum now changes to 27 so you can see that i have evaluated my right sum and my left sum over here they are not the same so that means that this element is not the pivot element, correct? The value represents the current index that I'm pointing to. There is one more important thing. This value represents the current value that I'm standing at. And we know that once we move ahead, this pointer is gonna point at the next location and I have lost the value. So before going ahead, I know that when I will reach here, I need to know the left sum. So this particular value, it will be added to the left sum before we move ahead. So this left sum now changes to one. And what I can do is I can move my pointer one step ahead now. What happens now? This value, it is pointing at nums.i. So this value changes to seven. And what is the right sum? You had this right sum available for all of these elements. And now you want to remove this value. The right sum is now only 3656. So you do a right sum minus equals to val and this changes your right sum to 20. What do you have now? You have the left sum and you have the right sum. The left sum is 1 and the right sum is 20. Are they same? No. So this is also not the pivot element. You can see the direction, right? How we are going to go ahead? Before moving ahead, I need to add this value to my left sum. This left sum now changes to 8. I am going to move ahead. And this time I'm pointing at the value three. So notice that as soon as I move ahead, I am pointing over here. I have already updated my left sum. This is eight, but I need to update my right sum also. So when I update the right sum, it will be 20 minus three. So that gives me 17. I have a left sum. I have a right sum. These are not the same. So I can safely move ahead. But before that, I need to update my left sum 8 plus 3 and that becomes the 11. I move ahead. The value now changes to 6. I need to update my right sum so that I can subtract the 6. So 17 minus 6 and that changes to 11. Notice what I have right now. I have a left sum of all of these elements. I have a right sum of these elements. I see both of them are 11 and this is where you stop. I have found out the pivot. and now what do you need to return you need to return this particular index not this value because this particular index is pointing at the pivot index so you simply return this and this becomes your answer and based upon this approach we can quickly do a dry run of the code on the left side of your screen you will have the complete code to implement this solution and on the right i have this array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function pivot index what was the first thing that we do? 
First of all, we initialize some of the variables, my right sum and the left sum. The left sum will be zero and the right sum will be the total of all of these values. So I run a for loop and I add all of them. Once I add them, the right sum now becomes 28. For the next step, what did we do? We iterate over each element in the array. So this for loop will iterate over every element one by one. And as soon as I am at this particular index, what do I need to do? I need to update my right sum. I need to remove this value from the total sum, correct? So I do write sum minus equals to nums at i. So my write sum now becomes 28 minus 1 and that is 27, correct? I now have a left sum that is 0 and a right sum that is 27. I can check, hey, are they the same? They are not the same, so we can move ahead. But before that, I need to update my left sum for the next iteration. So left sum will be whatever I have right now plus this value. So currently it is 0, so 0 plus 1 and I get a 1 over here. What will happen? This loop will run again and this time I will be pointing at 7. So what do you need to do? Update your right sum. Remove this 7 from the total sum. So 27 will change to 20. I compare the left sum and the right sum. They are not the same. So we are safe to move ahead. But before that, we need to do 1 plus of this particular number. So 1 plus 7 and that gives me a 8. This loop will run again. And I have now migrated over to my next element. So this is how it will continue to move ahead all the way up to the last element. And between that, it will stop over here where the left sum equals to the right sum. And then this condition becomes true. I can simply return this pivot element and this will be my answer. Also notice that if this loop completes and this condition is never executed, we simply need to return minus one as the answer because we could not find any pivot element. And that takes care of all the edge cases that we discussed in the beginning. You can see that we only iterated over the array twice. So the time complexity of this solution is order of n. And the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. Because we are not taking any extra space to arrive at our answer. I hope the problem statement and its solution are now clear to you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see a problem this simple, and you find out an answer. Don't just stop over there. I know that when you come up with the approach of taking the left sum and the right sum, you may feel that yes, this is a good enough solution because you are iterating the arrays only once. But also remember about the space. And this is a very good point which you can talk to your interviewer. Even if the interviewer has not asked for it, try to give them a better solution. Try to give them a solution which is taking zero space. So. That way, they know that, okay, you are able to think ahead and design efficient systems as well. So always keep that thought in mind. While going throughout the video, did you face any other problems? Or can you find any other solution which works in a constant space as well? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.